as soon as we got in the water, all of a sudden the reef erupted in this glorious display of light spots. It's for me the closest thing to magic that I've ever seen. On moonless nights in the Caribbean, the sea erupts in spectacular displays put on by tiny crustaceans called ostracods. In other parts of the world, these creatures only produce light to scare off predators. But in the Caribbean, male ostracods spew glowing mucus to attract females. When I started the work, there were two known species that emitted light in the Caribbean. And now we have well over a hundred. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We can't keep up with descriptions because we're discovering so many so fast. On the reefs, we often find six or eight different species. One of my favorites is Marastella chicoi, which does these radiating displays. Then on the margin of the coral is this downward displaying species. The very top of the reef, you'll get these slow upward displays and this other one we call a rocket. You look at a firefly where the flash is, the firefly still is. In ostracod, the luminescence is in the past. You might see three or four or five or more pulses, and that's still not where the male is. Individual pulses could last for upwards of 10 seconds. So you've got 100 milliseconds on one side or less, and then you've got 10 seconds on the other side. As researchers continue to discover new species, Advances in camera technology since the early 2000s have allowed them to better study these courtship displays. The recording capabilities that we had were a generation two night vision device. It's just green, right? There's no actual true color coming through. To determine quantitatively what's going on, we would then project those tapes onto a screen and then we would laboriously map out each display, how long each pulse lasted, how far they were apart, and so on. These days, there are low light level cameras all over the place. Most of our workers now have these cameras and they're able to get these videos and the displays very easily with no fuss, no muss. The way things have changed since I started in 2001 to now has pretty much made it that I could probably have done my dissertation in a matter of months rather than five years. We got to work with Martin Dorn where he created what's called the beam splitter where we could actually record with infrared on one and then right in the same field of view it would split and we could look at the luminescence with a infrared filter on top of it. Being able to see ostracods and their bioluminescence signaling at the same time help scientists determine just how many males are present during courtship displays. There's an incredible amount of competition and interactions that's going on in complete darkness that we don't even see until we could get the infrared, and especially when we got the infrared going in the field. Sometimes you can get upwards of 30 to 40 males swarming the displaying male. Those males are trying to capture the female before she can reach the one that's displaying, so we call them sneakers. In addition to recording signaling, researchers also capture ostracods to study their anatomy and genetics. This helps them classify species and understand their evolutionary history. I got really perplexed in Puerto Rico. We recorded different display types. We saw them in different habitats. And every time we collected them, they looked exactly the same. What we found is in Puerto Rico, there was this clade of one genera that had radiated into all these habitats and in all these unique groups. Versus in other places, we find like all three or four of the genera that we often find. There's just this range that allows you so much latitude in terms of looking at both ecological diversification as well as evolutionary di diversification. Major questions remain. Like why only ostracod species in the Caribbean use bioluminescence for signaling? And how so many species evolved to occupy different parts of the environment? I want the world to know about them, right? And hopefully maybe that would help with conservation and, and an appreciation of the environments that we're at.